to treat my brother as I treat myself is in, is in the Quran. There were some who criticized us for calling ourselves Muslim. We can take from it those elements which expand us as human beings and unify us as a group the same way the Italians do with the Bible. So, you know, what's the big deal? The first thing that always stands out in my mind is that they were men. They were men in every sense of the word. And they were constantly challenging themselves and wanted to travel and learn and see the world. It was not just 110 to 155th Street. That was a very small part of who they were. They always had this thirst for knowing more and doing more and being seen as more. These were the same guys that, that, along with others, made it possible for Harlem Week. These guys cared about Harlem, man. They cared about the people in Harlem. It's all right to make money in the community as long as you give something back. At certain times of the year, Easter, Christmas, New Year, Thanksgiving, the people would come in and say, I need help. And then you left with a turkey. He had that benevolence to him, the Thanksgiving Day turkeys, the spending money. He was giving something back to the community that he was raping and, and abusing and killing. My end, my whole focus was the money. You know, as harsh as that sounds, I mean, this guy wanted to destroy his life getting high, what I care. I'm not trying to run for sainthood, I'm trying to get paid. I had this one guy who was like my sampler, Claw, down on 116th Street. I mean, this guy's arm, do you know he didn't die till they took his arm off? I mean, his body really lived off the poison. And as soon as they talked him in the hospital, I mean, if Claw got a hit, you had a bomb. Because he didn't have no place to put it. So if he felt your product, you said, oh man, you got a winner. If it was garbage, he, would, he wouldn't even, I'd pull the car, be like, yo, just keep going. Cause I need to get high and that shit you got is garbage. My life, my life, my life. I think we brought to the business of a particular type of, of expertise. Because I was a former drug addict, Frank James a former drug addict, Thomas Former, a former drug addict, Joseph Hayden, former drug addict. If you ain't got customers, you ain't got a business, straight up. You don't. And the customers are the ones who drive the business, you know. Um, the old timers knew that. We say old timers now, but really, the guys who had the game at the time took care of the customers. Then Nicky Barnes was a dope fiend at one point. That's why he had a whole different way in which he'd done his business, straight up. I mean, you were, you were buying their product, and the customers meant money. You know, cussies meant dollars. My life, my life, my life. I think people, when they hear about a Nicky Barnes, they might have a vision of a guy that picks up narcotics himself and cuts it and it hangs around playground selling dope to, you know, to school kids. My operation had reached the level of sophistication wherein all I did was meet my supplier. My principal supplier was Matty Madonna. He was Italian. Um, I would meet him. We would sit down and we would, he would tell me what it was he had available for me. I would provide him with an automobile. The narcotics would be placed in the automobile. They would be dropped at a pre-designated location. They would be picked up by whoever I assigned to pick it up. And then uh, the business would function like a well-oiled machine. You know, there was girls on the table, you know, just people that did that as a living. But they used to steal. I said, just make them come in naked with no clothes on. He said, that's what I'll do. You know what we're gonna do? And them bitches come up there, take motherfucking clothes off. Make them bitches strip. If they don't wanna strip, fuck them, we won't hire them. And that's how that started. We used to come out like five, six o'clock in the morning. Five, six o'clock in the evening, we was finished. And I would do it like 1,500 to 2,000 quarters a day. I was making i say 10000 between $10,000 and $15,000 a day. Need some money. I need some money. Mm. I need some money. Daddy's dead. 
money. And my mind, money was so important and so valuable that this was the this was the pinnacle against which we measured everything. That's what the American dream is all about. Getting money and getting things. You have to have 10 or 15 stacks of $1,000 in the house at all times, you know, to be, you know, just to be comfortable. I think he modeled the council after his experiences with the mafia. He had learned a lot from the mafia, and he had taken it. He had been a good student, where now the student was, in some ways, better than the teachers. Uh, now he was making, you know, just boatloads more money than they could dream of. Black racket money stays in Harlem. No more mafia, police, mayors, senators, judges, or presidents. It's our money up here. Let's keep it. It was conflict between me.